So back in the day, the big question when buying a BMW used to be, do I buy the 3 Series Coupe or 3 Series Sedan? Well, BMW kind of solved that these days. If you're buying a 3 Series, you are buying a sedan. If you're buying the 4 Series, you're buying a coupe. And here we have the 4 Series. But of course, it is a four-door 4 Series. So this is the Grand Coupe, which kind of breaks the mold and hurts your brain if you think about it too much. So let's not do that. Let's jump into it. First off, this is the all-new 4 Series Grand Coupe, which means it's in its second generation now. And we have two different trim levels offered here. Your base trim is the 430i and your step up is the M440i xDrive. That's what we have here. All right, and let's start off this review talking about the exterior. The color here is Brooklyn gray metallic. I think it's a great looking color for this thing. It's not really a matte gray, but it is kind of a flat gray. And as far as colors go that aren't solid black or solid white, I do like this. We do get the new large kidney grills with detailed mesh inside. Looks really good. That BMW badge there on the front. You've got wide openings in the front bumper cover. The 4 Series Grand Coupe comes with standard adaptive LED headlights, which include two slender U-shaped fiber optic light guides that serve as daytime running lights. There are also optional Icon adaptive LED headlights with BMW laser light. You can definitely see a lot of aerodynamic work on this from the inlets at the front to the fins on the side, even the side mirror, and then around the side and the back with the small spoiler. It's definitely a long, sleek, coupe-like body with four doors and a rear hatch, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Our wheels here are the 19-inch M double-spoke bicolor wheels with run-flat tires. Behind those wheels are the M Sport brakes, which adds to the performance of the car. And in the rear here, you can see those LED taillights, very stylized. The X-Drive badge, the BMW badge, and the M440i badge. We also got dual exhaust coming out of that black rear fascia. And although I like the coupe design of the sedan, I think the uh, biggest area where it kind of falls flat is the rear. Although I don't hate it, it does look more bland than the rest of the car. And this new 4 Series Grand Coupe is 5.9 inches longer, 1 inch wider, and 2.1 inches taller than the predecessor. While the tracks have grown by 1.6 inches in the front and 0.7 inches in the rear, the full wheelbase is 1.8 inches longer than before. So if you're looking at total dimensions here, you're looking at a total length of 188.5 inches, wheelbase of 112.4 inches, width of 81.6 inches and height of 56.8 inches. And moving back around the back, you can see that the trunk is actually a hatch, which leads to the coupe design. And you do have a lot of room back here. You're looking at 16.6 cubic feet of cargo volume behind those rear seats. You can fold those down. It is a 40-20-40 split and that'll give you 45.6 total cubic feet of cargo volume. All right, with that, let's check out what's under the hood. All right, so if you're opting for the 430i, you're looking at a two liter twin power turbocharged four cylinder engine, and that engine puts out 255 horsepower this one in the M440i is a three liter BMW M twin power turbocharged inline six that pushes 382 horsepower, 368 foot pounds of torque, uses advanced 48 volt mid hybrid technology to perform with heightened e boost power and optimized efficiency. Both engines are equipped with a quick shift eight speed automatic transmission. And I probably don't need to tell you, but this is a pretty beastly engine for what it is. We'll talk more about that as we drive it. But first we need to check out the interior and the tech in here, then we'll take it for a drive. 
All right, guys, we are now inside the 4 Series Grand Coupe, and obviously it's a nice vehicle. Let me give you guys a good look around. All right, so first off, it is a push-button start, and we're going to get it started because it's a bit hot in here. And second off, let me show you these nice seats. We do have the Takora Red Vernasca leather with contrast stitching. These seats are super nice. It's like a maroon red with white or kind of light gray stitching in it. That is matched up with some black paneling and this aluminum Tetragon trimming, which I think looks really good in here. It's down here by the shifter and up on the dash. But these seats are super comfortable. They hug you really well. They are manually adjustable. Not even the driver's seat here is a power adjustable seat. It is manually adjustable. Although it is infinitely adjustable, it is sometimes difficult to get it to the perfect position. More difficult than the power, but uh, I definitely don't mind having the manual once you get it set. It's good. And like I said, they're super comfortable. Heated seats. Only other thing that you could get in here would be massaging seats, but uh, that would add weight and everything and probably defeat the purpose. Let me continue giving you guys a look around. So let's go ahead and talk about this screen here. It is a 10.25 inch center display and it is running iDrive 7.0, which is a great system. We also do have the multi-channel Harman Kardon surround sound system, which sounds really great in this sedan. You do have optional Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as wireless connectivity. You do have a wireless charger down here, so you can just throw your phone in and let it wirelessly charge. Obviously, we do have a USB connector, and this is USB type A. In the console is a USB type C as well as in the back you have USB type C. You have all your AC and heat controls here, some audio controls a little bit below that, the little cubby we just saw with cup holders. Back here is the shifter, the electronic gear shifter. Put it into reverse and you can see we do have a full 360 camera with reverse camera predominant. And you do get a lot of trick stuff with the camera, obviously. You do have backup assist. Got a 3D view that you can move the camera around. And you can move it around with gesture controls, which this car has for things like this, things like turning the volume up, pausing the track, uh, switching a track. Lots of cool stuff there, but a little bit gimmicky so you can swirl your finger to do the volume you can mute you can switch tracks the only problem with that is my wife talks with her hands a lot in the passenger seat and it has kind of tripped out and thought she was gesturing for it and pause tracks or switch tracks uh, without us actually wanting it to so there is that also down here is your iDrive controller. We have our traction control button, a quick camera button, parking sensors button, your stop start button, your drive mode. So you have Sport, Comfort, Eco Pro, and Adaptive, and your electronic parking brake. We do have the three spoke leather wrapped multi-function M Sport steering wheel. This is a heated steering wheel. It is the M Sport. You can see the M logo down here and you do have your different uh, function buttons here and paddle shifters in the back. Our driver display is a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster that looks really nice and can be adjusted depending on what you're trying to do. We also have a head up display, which obviously is tough to see, but is really nice and can be configured. All right guys, well, I think that's enough around the car. I'm sure I missed something. Leave it down in the comments if you want to know more but it's time to get this thing out on the road and see how it drives. So it's a BMW. Driving Dynamics is the name of the game. We have our driving dynamic control, which we can put it into sport mode. You can put it into an individual setting to really dial it in to what you like, but that's gonna stiffen the suspension, stiffen the steering, and really wake up that engine. 
and you can really just push this thing with no worries. It's got a ton of power. You can hear that rev matching downshift. Like any BMW, the steering is perfect. The power is great. Power delivery brakes are good with those M Sport brakes. You can hear it holding on to those revs. Brake hard, rev matching downshift, and power back out. Almost some uh, oversteer there. And you can definitely have a lot more fun than what is legal. Zero to 60 in this thing is rated at 4.4 seconds, which is great. Top speed, 155 miles an hour, which is limited. But you can definitely get up and go, and it's so smooth sometimes that uh, you definitely can forget that you're going as fast as you are. We can try a bit of a zero to 60 here and see how it fares. Coming up on a little bit of a straight. We are in Sport Plus. Go ahead and do manual shifts. Ready, set, go. Sixty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a ton of fun. And then you can put it back into comfort mode. Everything's quietens down. Makes it a lot more manageable for day-to-day -day driving. Less of a cup magnet out here, not being as loud more stealth with the sedan coupe like design and again the seats are super comfortable the seating position is super comfortable the steering wheel is great this thing just has a lot to offer some of the tech in it doesn't feel quite as updated as it could be the uh, live cockpit is really great but uh, having to pay extra or having to get apple carplay as an extra fee is a little bit annoying some of the gesture controls can be a little bit annoying, but when you're just driving and you're just on it, this thing is really great. We did take a pretty good trip up to uh, the north side of Dallas, the northwest side, and we're obviously on more of the east, east side of Dallas. So it's a good uh, hour or so drive get up on the highway you set the radar guided cruise control with the lane keeping assist and this thing will just help you stay in the lane help you stay a distance away and it's a great gt car which i think is an important aspect when you're buying a vehicle for an everyday driver especially here in texas because all too often you have those road trips where you just got to jump up on the highway and drive this does have that m sport differential m sport suspension so while it's not an m car you get a lot of the m tech built into it people can talk crazy all they want about you having an m 440i instead of a 440i m sport or whatever but uh, the M technology in here really works. If you're talking fuel economy, you're looking at 22 miles per gallon city, 29 miles per gallon highway. During our full week, we've been averaging 26.8 miles to the gallon, so almost 27. So it's been doing really good. And that uh, mild hybrid that you have where the engine can shut off, where it'll give you more of a sort of hybrid type setup it works as well as it does at least the shutting off of the engine and starting back up of the engine is done very flawlessly there's not a loud restart or anything like that so i don't mind it even though there's not a button in here that i've found that can turn that function off like you do in most cars so it is what it is there again during my full week of driving this thing it has been just great even my son told me that he thinks this car really fits me well and he's he said uh even after the third day of me driving it that i looked very comfortable in this car which uh i guess assumes that i don't always look comfortable driving some of the cars that i drive every week but i definitely think it shows that this thing is kind of suited for me for what i like which is uh, a nice comfortable family oriented grand touring type of car that you can really still have fun in. I like stiff steering. 
I don't care as much for all the luxury as long as it's got decent technology and it drives really well and that's exactly where this thing fits in. Of course, it always comes down to the price though. Let's uh, pull back over, we'll talk about the price a little bit and then we'll wrap up the video with some of my final thoughts. Let's get into it. All right guys, so it drives really nice. Let's go ahead and talk about the price and then we'll wrap it up with some of my final thoughts. First off, the base 430i Grand Coupe has an MSRP of $45,200. This, the 440i, has a starting MSRP of $58,200. And what we're sitting in here with the couple of options and M stuff that we do have has a total MSRP of $67,625. So that's a good chunk of change, but you're getting a lot of car for that, which I think is great. You'd have to let me know what you think, but let me jump out. I'll give you some of my final thoughts here on this vehicle, and then we'll wrap up the video there. All right, guys, so after a full week of driving this thing, I, I actually really like it. I probably like the Grand Coupe more than the Coupe. I've driven the M4, I've driven a couple other flavors of the 4 Series, but uh, this Grand Coupe kind of fits my style, my need. I was able to fit the family in here and uh, take it for some drives. Obviously not the whole family, but uh, for the events and stuff that we did this week, it worked out fine. Trunk space is great, got a lot of room back there. Engine, amazing lots of power and i even think the price is a really good price so would i recommend it i would definitely recommend it especially if you're already into bmw like i am but let me know what you guys think in the comments below hit the thumbs up button on this video if you did like it hit the subscribe button if you're new and you enjoy automotive reviews we put a new video out every week and with that guys thanks for watching